Hey everybody, thank you very much again for tuning in to My Adventures in Homebrewing. Um, this is episode number eight. I can't believe it. We're at number eight right now. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you to those who have tuned in and have subscribed and everything else. Uh, as you know, last week uh, we had um, Coulter Wilson from uh, Homebrewing DIY on the show uh, talking about do's and don'ts of homebrewing. So make sure you go over and check out his website, which is uh, homebrewingdiy.beer and uh, show him some love. Check out his sponsors and everything else like that. And also, if you get a chance, go down to the bottom of your app that you use for uh, podcasts. Leave me a, a, a review or a rating. It helped me know uh, how things are going along, what you like and you don't like. Or if you want, check out uh, the link that's inside of uh, the actual uh, podcast from my site and you can leave me a voice message if you like and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and if you leave me a question and if I get a chance to I will ask my next guest that question. So today we're very fortunate to have Kathy Ian Lee, the director of the Canadian Homebrewers Association with us tonight. So what we're going to do, we'll take a few minutes and enjoy the ride and have a beer or two along the way. Hey everybody, so we're back. Kathy, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Not a problem. Super excited to be on this podcast. Yeah, so uh, I am a relatively new member to the Homebrewers Association as of last year, which is fantastic. And it's been pretty cool watching everything that's been happening along with it. Uh, I did notice that you guys have only been around for about two years, right? That is correct. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, the Homebrewers Association, and uh, everything else in between. Sure. So I'm Kathy Anley. I'm one of the uh, co-founders and director for the Canadian Homebrews Association. Super easy to be a director of anything if you co-create it. So that's kind of helpful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, yeah. But uh, I started homebrewing, I think, probably sometime in 2011. Um, I was going to UBC in Vancouver and a bunch of friends um, asked me if I wanted to start a homebrew club with them on campus. And None of us knew how to homebrew, but all of us wanted cheap beer. So um, I agreed. So we started the UBC Brewing Club um, in 2011. And uh, in 2012, um, I became president. And so the year before, we had worked on creating some sort of uh, education program with the Brewing Club. So we had actually uh, managed to snag a kitchen on campus that would let us um, do weekly brew sessions. So that was really cool. Um, and I think they're still doing it now, which is very cool. Um, at that point in time, there weren't a lot of uh, campus brewing clubs that really survived past the people who created them. So it's kind of really cool that the UBC Brewing Club is still going um, right now. And then shortly after that, um, kind of graduated to Van Brewers um, in Vancouver, and then um, kind of got my I got started with my beer judging uh, stuff there. And shortly after that, I moved to the Yukon, where there are no beer judging opportunities because it's the territory. <laughs> a lot of snow. Yeah, a lot of snow. Um, but managed to uh, get some judging under my belt by driving, heading to Alaska. They have a, quite a few competitions there. Really? Wow. And yeah, Alaska's got some pretty cool competitions. Um, they have, um, in January, there's like a commercial barley wine festival. Mm-hmm. So all you judge is barley wine. That's, that is uh, not my thing. Um, yeah. Cause also if you volunteer to judge, you get tickets to their festival and it's like, you can only drink like four barley wines and then you're done. But there's like, you know, over 50 types of barley wines. There's no way you could try them all. Yeah. The barley wine is a bit of an acquired taste. I, I, and I will admit it is a bit of my Achilles heel that I'll take a sip and my, my face just puckers. I can't do it. Yeah. And that's kind of the same for me too. That is like, it has to be a very specific time and moment for me to enjoy barley wine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Um, so, with the Homebrewers Association, uh, did you guys mirror that after the AHA or the America's America Homebrewers Association? Yes, we did. Um, so, um, so I've been thinking about starting kind of a national um, Homebrewers Association for a few years. Um, Prior to us, uh, there was the uh, CABA, Canadian Amateur Brews Association. So they started sometime in the 80s. And I think they kept running until mid-2010s mid and just didn't have kind of people uh, wanting to run it and take over. And they just mm -hmm. kind of petered out. And this was like the time that they were kind of petering out was kind of when I was starting to like 
wanting to get involved with like a national homebrew association and we just kind of missed each other. Right. Um, so I was really, I really wanted to have something that really represented like homebrewers across Canada and really told Canadian homebrewing stories because you look at the AHA and there's like, all these cool stories from like different regions, different states, and like all the homebrewers seem to know each other. And we don't have that similar culture here. Like, of course, like within the bigger cities, like within your own homebrew club, like you might have, you might know what people are doing, but we don't have the same like cross provincial territorial kind of borders, like mm -hmm. the same culture that, as the AHA does. Um, and I really wanted to kind of bring that and create that here. Um, so I actually, ran to be a part of the governing committee for American Homebrewers Association a few years ago and actually got elected in. Um, I was the first international um, governing committee member at that point in time, which I was super surprised because, you know, I think a couple other Canadians had, uh, had run before and didn't get um, elected. Mm -hmm. um, so I was super surprised and it was a three-year term, but that was a great three years because I, that was, I got an inside kind of view of how the AHA worked and kind of got to steal some of their ideas when I uh, made sure I laid the groundwork for the Canadian Homebrew Association. Right. Yeah. So like before, um, so the Canadian Homebrew Association was um, officially formed uh, late 2018. And um, I co-created with Scott Bouchard um, out of Vancouver. He was the Van Brewers president at the time. Okay. And I had known him from when I was part of Van Brewers years before that. And um I had gone to, I made an effort to try to make it to some of the bigger homebrewing uh, competitions. Uh oh. I like, you know, meet people, tell people what I wanted to do, see if there was an interest. And there was totally an interest, just that people didn't have time to kind of get it going themselves, right? Because it is kind of a big endeavor to try to create something that functions nationally yeah. with all of us so spread out. Um, but it, I think it was really important knowing that people would support it, right. And people were interested and they wanted to be a part of that. So in, in 2018, when we launched a Kickstarter to to kind of like initially launch, um, the organization, we had over 200 people sign up. Oh, that's awesome. So I did read a little bit about the, the, the community and I, at least I know with the American Homebrewers Association, they, they do a lot for educational stuff. They do, obviously they, they have their big conference uh, down at like this year was supposed to be down in Tennessee, but it got kind of kiboshed because of COVID. So they went virtual. And last time um, you did a virtual conference. So I think I was part of it because you were looking for the club presidents. Um, you were looking, you were considering doing a virtual uh, homebrewers conference here in Canada. Yes. So we are still doing it this year. Okay. It's going to be on September 12th. We haven't got any of the promo material out, but we have four or five speakers and a keynote speaker uh, for that day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we had like, so part of, um, I've always, I've like, when the Canadian Homebrew Association was kind of created, um, doing a homebrew conference was always something that I really want to do. It's just a bit challenging to figure out the logistics of running a physical one. Just because, you know, if you, if you want to select a location where there's tons of homebrewers, like Toronto or Vancouver, um, it's going to be very expensive to run oh, yeah. it either for like us running it and people visiting. Right. And so we try to figure out if there was any like kind of like nearby communities like Kitchener Waterloo would be a fantastic place to run it. Cause they have a really big homebrewing community there and it's not super far from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Like people could drive there from like the bigger um, homebrewing communities. Right. Um, but for just because we're only like, we're in our second year of running and I think it's a bit, people still don't quite know who we are. And I thought it, I think I thought it was going to be very risky to kind of try to run a physical um, mm. conference in our second year. And um, I'm glad I didn't because COVID-19 happened. So exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So yeah. I think the online thing is going to work. And I think um, at least for the first little bit to kind of build some momentum when people are more familiar, you know, if we have good speakers come on and I, and I'm working we're really hard to have Canadian speakers because there's a lot of cool, like homebrewing things that like Canadians are doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There are some, some really cool things. I, at least I know that some of the guys are doing in and around here. I know there's a couple of guys who've actually gone and started doing some barrel aging and things like that. So um, they're like, you got to try it. I'm like, I'm nowhere near that level just yet, boys. I mean, I'm, I'm getting there, but I'm nowhere near that. But how does the Brewers Association actually help a 
an individual brewer like myself in the community advance themselves to make themselves a better brewer? So um, what we're working on is, so right now we are, we have launched a speaker series um, at the start of this year. So it's a monthly program. We get someone, um, a Canadian home brewer and from different provinces um, every month to kind of chat about something they're interested in. So for example, our last month was with um, Ivan Kozoletov uh, from uh, Prince Albert in Saskatchewan. And he is a phenomenal award-winning mead maker. And he did a whole presentation about making fruit meads. And he went into details as to like, you know, proportion of like fruits to like water that he really recommends and like what works for him. And I, like, I, I think it's really fantastic because otherwise, like you don't really hear from people like that who are fantastic homebrewers and have great techniques that they can be, that can be shared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one thing I've noticed is that, um, uh, there are a lot of cool guys out there. You just got to be able to tap into them the right way. I know we're, I'm, I'm fortunate. It's like I get to work at a really cool uh, craft brewery here in Ottawa called Stray Dog. And Mark and Justin are fantastic. Justin's our, uh, one of the owners and uh, he is our brewmaster. And I pick his brain constantly about, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. What do you think? And he says, you're on the right path. Just switch it this way. And, or take that out or take that hop out because it's going to clash with this hop and you'll be fine. So, I mean, in that sense, yeah, again, there's a lot of cool things out there, but how does one find you guys? I mean, it, it's not like uh, you go into your local homebrew store and you have a big poster there saying, join us, we'll make you famous. So, I mean. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not very good at marketing ourselves. <laughs> so honestly, I think all our memberships so far have been word of mouth. Okay. Um, which is you know, great. Um, but yeah, we haven't just because, um, we've kind of just been trying to organize and like run the whole thing ourselves. We haven't really had kind of the time to kind of have a marketing plan and like, you know, have posters out at places. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, like when we started wanting to get ready for that after running it for a year, um, COVID-19 happened. So now we're just kind of sitting at home being like, well, I don't know, like, it'd be kind of cool if we could go out, but like people aren't really going to stores anymore. Um, so yeah, like we're online. Um, where you can find us at canadahomebrews.ca and that's the same um like kind of handle for all our social medias um yeah eventually we'd like to kind of have our posters at um homebrew supply shops like we have a few stores that we have like our membership gets discounts at um this year we started um applications for um, homebrew supply store of the year we're trying like so we're trying to find ways that we can kind of give back to the community Mm -hmm. um one of the things that we're working towards is to be able to um, help push for legislative changes um, in the various provinces and territories. Mm -hmm. So right now we're not quite there yet um, because we kind of also want to gauge interest from the various different like provinces and territories, because we do need people who are also going to want to help push the cause. But that is something that we are prepared to help with, you know, either with, you know, financing for like a campaign or to look for, you know, lawyer type people i'm not quite sure what's needed in a campaign like that (laughs) because we haven't done one (laughs) but you know that's something we want to do we want to help push for legislative changes and i think as the cha grows and you know has kind of more like weight to it then i think with more people behind it it can definitely help the cause from when we do want to make that change so what kind of changes are you guys hoping to make legislatively i mean i know like here in Ontario, when everything happened, Doug Ford came in and was wanting to do this whole buck of beer thing, whatever else, to to make everything affordable, or whatever else. But that was that's for big companies. So how does that help someone like me or a local craft brewery uh, stay viable? So, like honestly, like a lot of the laws in regards to home brewing across Canada are we're kind of in the gray area. Okay. So like even for a lot of places, like even running like a homebrew club meeting where you bring homebrew to someplace public to share is kind of in the gray area where like depending on the liquor license, like liquor inspector, like coming by to check you out, they may or may not give you a ticket because, you know, there's nothing that says you can't do it, but there's also nothing that says you can do it. Right. So for example, like in Ontario, there's no liquor license you can apply for if you're running a, a BJCB tasting exam. Okay. But we've definitely run like BJCP yeah. exams in Ontario, yeah. right? So like 
we, we just don't want people to be kind of personally liable or anything like that. So if we can have like just laws specifically saying, yes, this is allowed, then I think that's, and at least it kind of brings the hobby out into like the clear, you know what I mean? Like we're not kind of shuffling around in the darkness trying to mm-hmm. hide. Okay. So, uh, and how are you attracting like just overall like new members? I mean, I, I know you said you're not, um, you're not advertising and things like that. And you're saying it's mostly word of mouth. And one thing I do notice is, that, and I, I, I have seen a lot of clubs, uh, at least the younger guys in the clubs are saying they wish they saw more lady brewers involved in making beer. Cause I, I know a few girls who make some kick-ass beer and who put a lot of guys to shame. And it's, I mean, I think it's something that should be put forward to bring more people, more diversity into the actual hobby or into what we do. I think like, so the CHA can't really offer like what your local homebrew club offers, right? Like you, we don't do like monthly meetings in person mm-hmm. and uh, we don't really, we aren't able to do bulk buys cause that's going to be like a nightmare logistically to kind of organize for across Canada. Um, but what we can offer is just like kind of like a community for like everyone else who doesn't have access to like a local homebrew club. Mm-hmm. And so like, we don't like, there's no, like, we don't have a forum. We don't have a Facebook group because there is like another Facebook group chat, like group. Yeah. uh, All Canadian homebrewers that like all, like everyone else is like kind of on. But we kind of, you know, share articles, sharing people's stories. Like um, this month where we um, have an article that is, um, that um, is about Indigenous Brews Day um that happened on june 20th we're like we're offering a platform for like voices that you may not hear about um and it is and it is challenging because like we don't we just because not many people know like that we exist yet um people aren't really reaching out with stories right so i'm like basically a member on every of every single uh canadian homebrew club on facebook (laughs) so i'm just like lurking in the shadows like kind of like reading what people are doing being like hey that sounds cool do you want to write something about it um and like doing the same thing on like social media being like hello hi oh, that seems very cool like do you want to write a story about it and so like i mean it, it would be awesome if people could approach us and say like yeah i want to share the story we did this cool project within our group or like you know um i come from a long line of like women homebrewers and like this recipe was passed down from my great great grandmother you know like those would be cool stories to share mm-hmm. um but uh, sometimes you don't hear about it because like, you know, maybe these people are not part of homebrew clubs, right? And they're sharing it with their, just like on their personal Facebook, which I may or may not see because, you know, we're not friends on Facebook. Um, so yeah, like if people have stories, definitely send it to us because we want like, there, once again, like there's tons of amazing, cool things that like Canadian homebrewers are doing. And I just want to share it. I just want to show that like we can be as cool, if not cooler than the American homebrewers or homebrewers mm. anywhere else. All right. All right. So I know that you there like for members, there's like cool discounts and things like that. Well, when you for associated uh, homebrew shops and I think short finger is a homebrew shop and also kind of like brewery too. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if someone wanted to get involved in that sense, how do they reach out to you? Uh, send us an email. Uh, you know, let us know if you want to, if you're a business and you want to offer a discount to our members, just send us an email and let us know what you're comfortable with that. We don't have like, you know, we don't have to say, we, we don't have like a, you have to offer this much, like whatever you're comfortable with. Like, I understand a lot of homebrew supply stores off, like operate at a very like low, like profit margin. And like, we want to support you as well. And we want to make sure our brick and mortar stores stay open as well. Mm-hmm. Cause that's usually people's first point of contact when they start homebrewing. Okay. And Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, it's, th- th- there's so much out there when it comes for new people to try and, and sift through. I mean, be it through trying to find a homebrew club that you fit in with to finding the right gear to saying, Oh my God, I'm about to drop like $80 on ingredients to make beer. And it's, I mean, it, it can get overwhelming. Um, is there any advice for, for, for those who are like feeling like they've jumped into the deep end without a life preserver? Uh, just do it. 
honestly, <laughs> don't be overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge out there. There's going to be people who are, you know, going to be adding salts to their water. They're like tweaking their water to a per- like precise pH. But like, you don't have to brew at that level. You can just say like, I made something at home, you know, with a kit and I'm very happy with it. And that's your home, you're a home brewer. There's no, like, it doesn't make you less of a home brewer to use a kit. You know, if you're brewing, if you want to get started, you, there's like one gallon brew kits out there. Yeah. And like all you need, you don't even need to buy the gallon jug at the store. You can go to your superstore or, or your farmer's market and buy one of those one gallon apple cider make cider with the cider and then use the ga- gallon jug for fermentation later. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that and that actually looks pretty cool. Um, now for, I saw that you guys also promote a lot of the, the competitions and things like that. And unfortunately this year, a lot of them have been kiboshed. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately <laughs> so does the, does the association actually like, ramrod or head up any of the of the competitions or or is there like a national competition that the association does so we were going to work with brewer of the year to do kind of like a a invitational from this year's kind of brewer of the year competition circuit but Mm -hmm. of course COVID-19 happens and so um, that's something we're going to look at doing for next year so the okay. idea was that we would basically get the top 10 brewers of, let's say, for example, 2020. And then we would say, you are all invited to an invitational. You have to brew these certain number of beers and we will, or you have to brew from a pool of these styles and then we will judge them. Um, and then we would be judging it in 2021 and then be like, when at the end of that January, we would be like, the brewer of the year of 2020 is... Ah, okay that makes sense that makes yeah. sense all right all right so you are a home brewer so what are you working on now for beer i have honestly transitioned more to meads in the last few years oh um just because i uh do not have a regular schedule and it's uh, much easier to maintain mead than beer okay Meads you can just make it you throw your honey your yeast your water you have to baby it for the first few days, kind of like stir it around, add your nutrients, but then you just set it and forget it. And it's great. Cause I, sometimes I do forget about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I've done that too. I mean, I just finished uh, getting together a fermentation chamber and uh, I've run into problems with my ink bird. Now that the alarm high mm-hmm. is, is going off and it won't shut up and I've adjusted it three different ways sideways. So now it's just unplugged. The chamber is now plugged in permanently to the wall and set oh to, and set to uh, 62 degrees. So, nice, hopefully, that's awesome. so hopefully it works. <laughs> we'll see. Nice. Cause I'm like, I've got this great ink bird and it's just cracked the bed. <laughs> Aww. Uh, it's ink all birds good. are like everywhere though. It should be easy to replace. Yeah. You would think so. I mean, I, w- I reached out to Inkbird themselves and they're like, well, we need your purchase order number from the online store you bought it from uh, just to prove that you actually bought this thing. And if you go in and just change the parameters to extremely high and extremely low, you'll be fine. And I'm like, you couldn't have what? just put, yeah, you, like, you couldn't just put that in the owner's manual. <laughs> yeah, that would have been helpful to know. Exactly. So, Kathy, thank you so much for being on the show today. That's it for right now. I hope to have you, maybe you and Eric and a few others come back and we can do like a, just a round table of, of ideas and things that you guys might want to just talk about just for shits and giggles. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right. All right. So, thank you very much again. I hope to talk again. And uh, thanks for coming along for the ride, guys, and, and having a beer or two on the, along the way. I'm Dan, and we'll see you on the other side.